start, I'll start with you, David, as we talk about the uh, Yellow Jackets and uh, just a quick, you know, Yellow Jackets last year. Uh, Eleven and two, yes, six what and zero, oh, district yeah. champs, wow. uh-huh. uh, and uh, Trey Brooks, head coach, now in his fifth season, and uh, we only have five. Re- we have five offensive players returning, two defensive players, and Rockwall ended up going to the uh, regional uh, quarter round yeah, and lost exactly. to Westfield uh, in that one, but uh, won two games, uh, beat Wiley, and then beat Waxahachie. So let me start by this: what What are you looking forward to the most uh, with this team coming up? Well, I'll tell you what, you know. If, Obviously, the rest of this, you talk about Landon Lott, quarterback, returns, gets to lead this thing on his own. Yep. He yep. said, been able to share that, you know, the share with uh, with Mason Marshall. A lot of folks didn't think that would work the last year, and it was very, very successful. Yeah, one of the few times. Talks that about, that and, and what a neat deal that is. It says a lot about Trey as a coach and his staff, and then obviously as far as the, the, the quality of the individual mm-hmm. you know, with, with Mason mm-hmm. Marshall and with Landon Locke. Well, Landon will get an opportunity this year to, to lead that offense as a starting quarterback. Last year he threw for 1,702 yards, 19 touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, part-time. A, you know, exactly, mm-hmm. part-time. Think about that for a moment. Of course, he'll take the helm of the University of Wisconsin recruit. Mm-hmm. Might have had some connections there. Um, a little bit you of connections, I mean? and i got a little another tidbit. <laughs> Sister is also going to be going to Wisconsin, cool. so all the the locks are. So what if the to parents are going to go to Wisconsin? Mm-hmm. Yeah, stay yeah. Here? I think they're going to go there. Are yeah, they going to really support yeah. the kiddos? Yeah. Why not? Ooh, but that weather. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you know, offensively, lots of uh, firepower. Rockwall, offensively, has been so always uh, just all, every year. You know, able to mm-hmm. uh, to move the football just um, and obviously line up the scoreboard. Gooch returns. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. Love um, that kid. My notes that I put down here. Of course, you had. Uh, uh, Tristan Gooch had 67 receptions for a thousand, well, over 12 over 1,200 yards and 17 touchdowns. So look out. We've got still tons more of you've been Gooch calls. Yes, we have a lot of you've been Gooch. Yeah, so, yeah, Gooch. yeah. So yeah. Then, Every time uh, he makes a big play, yeah. you've been Gooch. You've been Gooch. Yeah. <laughs> so and you don't need one of those boards. I know. You can been press, I could probably do it off the laptop. I'll have yeah, to work at it. You can a way to be able yeah, to sound yeah. board. There yeah. you go. Exactly. We got a mixer, but it's not the same. You don't have the. We got we, a lot of things come from laptops, so it's, mm. but there's we'll talk about it later. There's a billion things we're doing, so it's hard to hit the it's, the dump or whatever. I was gonna say just just fit it in. Yeah, <laughs> just fit it in. Just do it, Billy. You You'll make it. a way. You'll find yeah. a way. You'll find a way. <laughs> but you know, of course, and, and as you and Jamar Wilson, the the running back who rushed yes. last year for almost 500 Exciting yards and five him. touchdown backup. He's it's, it's his chance to yeah to be the lead back. He was basically the third back last year. Yeah, had over exactly. Yards, yeah. You know, so uh, you know preseason. Expectations or projections, if you will. Of course, they pick out for ten six A. The Dave Campbell's uh, picks uh, Rockwall to uh, to win districts. Has them at number twenty two uh, uh-huh. in the preseason rankings. Um, but the thing that if we can for a moment, and of course we brag, always want to make sure we mention as many of these kids right. uh, as we can. We we'll do that in a second. But I thought it's pretty interesting to think about this. You know, there's three phases of a season. We talk about that, you know, your non-district that prepares you to play in district play, or rather, you know, that focus in district play, you want to be battle-tested in district to head into to the postseason. You want to take advantage, if you can, to become battle-tested, if you will, in non-district, get you ready for non-district. Well, Trey took that seriously, didn't he? Yes, he did, yes. <laughs> in teams, in terms of Rockwall schedule, mm-hmm. ah. nine out of the ten teams that we play, nine out of the ten teams that we play made the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Uh, in mm-hmm. non-district, if playing the likes of Longview and Forney and Rockwell Heath and so forth um, doesn't do it enough for you in uh, yeah. district play, right. how about we'll play Lake Travis, preseason ranked number eight, and we'll go on the road to take them on. After playing Bertner, uh-huh. who made the postseason last week or last year here at home, go on the road to take on Lake Travis, who's preseason ranked number eight, go on the road take on Louisville, mm-hmm. talented, loaded, lots of kids coming back from them. And then, of course, uh, the last non-district game, we'll take on North Crowley, the number five team. Well, a real quick state. story on that. When you know when the coaches do the schedules, <clears throat> they go to, you know, what is it, Birdville or whatever. Mm-hmm. They always gather there. And they and, and you would think that there's this whole system. It's basically coaches like, you need a game, you need a game. And they just kind really? of make it. Yeah. I would never think it would be like yeah. For non-district. Okay. And so... They're scrambling, and I remember texting Trey and saying, hey, you got the non-district schedule. And he goes, man, I got three of four, but I'm still looking for a team for the fourth week. And on Twitter, there's always, uh, the, the the coaches will post on Twitter all the time, hey, looking for a game fourth week. Or game whatever. three, game four. Game four, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I see that Byron Nelson needs a game for week four. So I text him, I go, hey, on Twitter, Byron Nelson's looking for a game. 
And he texts me back and goes, dude, are you serious? They went 14-1 and one last year. We're not, I, I've already got two good teams. We're not doing Byron Nelson. <laughs> then I said, okay. Ten minutes later, he goes, oh, okay, we got one. I go, who? He goes, North Crowley. Who went 14-1 and one 14 last and one, year? And yeah. I go, oh, that's a better 14-1 and one than the other 14-1. <laughs> and one. And Didn't has they almost lose? everybody returned. I think North Crowley lost. Their loss was uh, uh, Trophy Club. Yeah, I think. it was. Yeah. It was Byron Nelson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's Byron yeah. Nelson. And so, yeah. so, yeah, so that's another. But it's always been that way with Rockwall. Yeah. Back to Rodney days. Uh, I always joke around. Who are we playing? We got uh, the... You know, the uh, longest yard team, you know, yeah. we'll play the prisoners, uh, then we'll play the Patriots. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just kind of do all that. Whichever had a bye week and was willing to come down here and play, we'll play you. Yeah. In, in a wise. <laughs> so, who are you looking forward to seeing? Here's, here's what I want to, here's some other notes I want to mention. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to talk about 10, <coughs> 10 6 a You know, people refer to, and rightly so, 11 6 a as what the District of Doom, the Legion of Doom, whatever you want to call it. Well, that's with uh, Duncanville and DeSoto over yeah. there. You know, uh, back to back state championships for both those two programs. Mm-hmm. It is a tough, tough place to, tough to play, uh, place to to play for sure. And of course, you got Cedar Hill and Waxahachie. They're, right, they're Cedar right Hill's there. a, a yep. improving program. Going to be much better this year. Waxahachie's a very complete program. Lancaster mm-hmm. moving up. You got that's where Mesquite, Mesquite Horn. Yes, that's uh, where they go after after we lost mm-hmm. those guys. But top to bottom, ten six A. It's insane. It is. What a you know. Yeah. I wrote down serious power district. Yeah. Of course, Mesquite, Mesquite Horn moved out to eleven six A as I mentioned. Now we. Pick back up Longview as they move back up to six A, right? Ming and five A, and then well, Forney moves up yeah. from five A to six A. Five A state semifinalist. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they'll do it this year when they've got as loaded. Oh, yeah. the best running a, back. Yeah, best yeah. running back. I went to that playoff game. game. That was uh, insane. Yeah, that was a crazy the playoff game. Yeah. The yeah. Lancaster one yeah. where they yeah. won in overtime. What's funny is though, I think I saw the quarterback, and this is no dig to the quarterback. I've heard he was really good, but from what I saw, quarterback threw two times, both times. Empty, no one in the field. <laughs> yeah, every other time handed it to the running back. And Boom. now he's got Peterson. Stud. Now he's got a quarterback that's moved in. That's right, Sunnyvale. Sunnyvale right. yeah. Sunny Sunny quarterback insane. moves it's supposed in. Supposed to be unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, but you've got, and then you know, of course, that's as I mentioned, those two teams, um, Forney and Longview. Longview moves into six, moves up to six A. Forney moves up as well and replaces Mesquite and Mesquite Horn. Six out of the seven teams made the playoffs last year out of our district. Yeah, Forney, you referenced that uh, stand went thirteen and two, five A Division One state semifinalist. Lost to Alito. Yep, eventual exactly. state championship. You got Longview, the five A D one regional semifinalist. Yeah, you've got obviously Rockwall that won eleven and two, six A D one regional semifinalist. Heath, nine and three, six A Division One area finalist in Rodney's first year. North Forney went nine and three, six A D two area finalist. Um, Tyler Legacy, of course, they uh, you know won three district games, but ended up sneaking into the playoffs. Right. And uh, last week, Trey Hands, mm-hmm. our first year, loaded teams all the way throughout. Yeah. Then listen, the, the thing to point out as far as district coaches are concerned, names you got Trey at, at uh, Rockwall, Rodney, of course, over at Heath, the state championship winning coach. John King down in Longview. Yeah, Longview yeah. You've got uh, Jeff Flaner, who's won everywhere he's been yeah. over at Forney. Uh-huh. Uh, Trey Han entered his second year at Legacy. Marcus Shavers, who turned around, uh, turned around McKinney, yep. takes over in North the Allen Forney. District. Yeah. Yeah. Takes over <clears throat> North Forney. And then Coach Colvin. Coach Colvin. Yeah, yeah. Coach Colvin, a former Rockwall offense coordinator who's identified in Dave Campbell's as what, what they call him as one of the brightest young minds oh, yeah. in high school football. Wow. Enlisted in the 40, under 40, next generations of great coaches. And uh, you know, unbelievable guy. Just in a, this, this program, the and the quality of the kids, the quality of the, the commitment that each one of these schools have behind, and the support that they have. Yeah. Um, quality coach, quality of kids. It's mm-hmm. going to be a battle week in and week out. Can't wait to see. We're going. I can't imagine why anybody would want to miss any Friday right. night. You know, I what agree. I mean? it's going to be insane. Because let's let's be let's be honest. The previous years in, in this district. Another thing is Rockwall and Heath were pretty much always the given. Yeah. They're going to win. Whoever wins that I thirty game will be the district, district champ, champ. Yeah. and the next and the other guy will be the second place. So it, it, there was a letdown sometimes when you're playing these other schools that you're like, you know, we're going to beat them, and and we, we kind of know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Every week is going to be a, a, a big game. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be a given. And the great thing is, for the first time since I think Heath became a football program and they became a high school, we're going to be playing the I-30 Classic second to last game yes, of the season. Exactly. So that game is going to carry even more weight. Yeah. Uh, think about how that important that's going to be by then, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course, again, Ed Campbell's the way that they predicted them in this preseason poll was Rockwall, <clears> 40, <throat> Longview, then Rockwall, Heath as the four teams. And 
And who knows? But I, I think I, it's no. going to be one of the. It's the same as it is every year, where it's you know you've got two or maybe three teams. It's like man, they're a lock. Yeah, like yeah. they're going to be the top yeah, thing. And then there could be any number of four or five teams competing for I that agree. final spot. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. I agree. It, it, it's crazy. Real quick, David, and then we'll jump over to Stan talk a little bit about the Hawks. Uh, some of the guys you're looking forward to seeing. Oh this man, year. goodness! It kind of mentioned you know as far as the uh, you know. Obviously, Locke taking over and getting his chance to run the run the show himself, and of course Gooch, and it's always fun to watch uh, Wilson. Yeah, but, um, but excited to see Kel Anderson, yeah. Tommy Kate Anderson, yep. Kel Anderson coming back from an injury. Uh, you know, we'll see him at tight end. Obviously, uh, Jack Duckworth, excited to see him as mm-hmm. well. We'll see him probably at wide receiver and, and, and as well as a corner. Mm-hmm. Got a big guy up front and a Wunze, Chase a Wunze, the offensive lineman, six foot one, three hundred thirty pounds. Oh, love that kid, That's lineman. Great. Tackle, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I talked. They didn't about make him like that back when we were in. <laughs> <laughs> they were just a little yeah. bit bigger, right? Some big yeah. old boys. Yeah. And then of course, uh, you know, Jackson Stoner, tight end, yeah. defensive end, a six foot four, two hundred twenty five pound uh, young man. You got of course Will Ashworth, <laughs> uh, the safety. Ashworth, remember his brother was right, outstanding, one of the hardest hitting yep. guys that we've ever seen come through the program. So, and then of course they and another young man to uh, look out for. You got Cameron Marsh, you know, mm-hmm. wide receiver and safety mm-hmm. returns. Uh, Cade Warren. Uh, Eric Gabriel, uh, the uh, the cornerback, mm-hmm. uh, and then of course Caden Castro, uh, top, so- top yep. one of the top sophomores to to look out for. Um, the five foot eight, one hundred and seventy pound, uh, as I mentioned, sophomore. Excited to see him. And then so. we got our favorite name, uh, defensive end Edwin Gonzalez Salas. Uh, Gonzalez Salas, absolutely love that big kid. guy, man. Really, so really much fun. And a neat havoc. kid, and a good kid, and a, and a mm-hmm. kid that will will get to the Leander Parish uh, mm-hmm. defensive end. That's mm-hmm. going to be coming in and doing some stuff. So this is going to be fun. We can't tell uh, the jacket fans enough. That every week it's going to be buckle your chest. It's going to be insane, it's man. It's going to be great, mm-hmm. and I think it's just going to set up a great, great matchup with Heath at, near the end of the season. Absolutely, and it's just going to be a blast. Rockwell will be the home team, I believe, this year, mm-hmm. yeah. and so. But I, I think sometimes the visiting team may get the advantage sometimes in that matchup yeah, because too. it's a little bit. You kind of us against the world when the visitor side. You, you're packed over there. You don't have as much room, and I just think it's. Uh, uh, it, it's it's going to be really fun. It, it is going to be a lot really of fun. fun. And then one of a couple of things that I wanted to point out, and that'll be interesting to watch. We talked about this loaded schedule in non-district. What each game is going to be like during the playoffs. On the road is another thing that's going to stand out. Being on the road, yeah. of course, the Lake Travis game, as I mentioned, that's uh, their jackets will travel to take on yeah. those guys, and. Uh, the two trips to East Texas. Yeah. Both yeah. those two. We're doing a lot of traveling. Are, are on the road this year. So you go to Longview to win and go, yeah. exactly. Go to Longview and go to, um, go to, uh, go to Tyler to take on Legacy. Mm-hmm. And then the only other point that I mentioned on this is you, we, we talked about predictions, um, projections, how things are, in t- folks anticipate. But quite honestly, as we listed the, the teams and what they've done last year, uh, the coaching staff, the commitment that those guys have, the way that they work, the commitment that's behind each one of these programs, the thing that you can say for sure is, yes, as you said, three, two to three throughout the season kind of tend to, to rise to the rise top. Up, yeah. But I can honestly mm-hmm. tell you, if any of these teams in this district will make the playoffs, you might be surprised, but you wouldn't be completely shocked. No.